here at the world's 50 best restaurants 2014 where they're setting up for the chefs to arrive. Will it be another year at number one for El Salvador de Can Roca or will someone else take the top spot? How many British restaurants will make the list and will there be any new British entrants? Everyone's waiting to find out. Okay, what impact do you think being on the list has for a restaurant? Really big. We're like, uh, it is very important. It is very important because uh, this list has been uh, is followed by all the foodies from all over the world. The list is helping us and helping them to push them and uh, and uh, to come to Modena and try Osteria Francescana. For us, um, we used to have uh, quieter periods in the year that were where people would leave town in Hong Kong and, and since we are on the 50 bags it has to replace itself fully by, by people especially coming for the restaurant and due to list. So for us, uh, from an economic perspective, it's been extremely ex important. It's shone a spotlight on the restaurant from an in international point of view. Um, and yeah, it's been busy. It's been super, super busy. Yes, it definitely has an impact. It brings international recognition um, because the press all over the world pick up on the news. Um, and uh, we see people coming to our restaurant because they heard of, of us uh, because of the event tonight and, and being part of the list. So it's a good thing. What do you think the World's 50 Best Awards means to the industry? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a chance for, uh, for some culinary leaders um, from around the world to, to meet up, which is quite nice, and, uh, and hang out a little bit. We've been spending time the last couple of days uh, just um, catching up with friends, and uh, I mean, it's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice opportunity for us to just take a few days and um, to chill out and to relax and to have a bit of fun. So, I think the this list, the 50 best, it's a, it's it's given customers a, a sort of rating system to rate a restaurant, probably the way they sort of rate tennis players or golfers, where where they didn't have that before. Um, and I think the uh, the appeal of this these awards are very far reaching. Um, it appeals to such a big audience that I think any restaurant in the top 50 will have a, a you know, the phones will be ringing tomorrow morning. Just to be stood here on the square as part of the, hopefully part of the 50 best uh, uh, list, you know, to be here as part of that, you, I would certainly have never dreamed to be stood here in, in the position and what we're doing. So, I mean, it's quite humbling really, to be honest. I mean, Definitely. I mean, you can you know you can talk about who should be where and the list and what what space, but just to just to be here and to uh, I mean, it's a great thing. All, so many chefs that you know you've read about or that you you know you know, and they they're all here, and you can talk to them and uh, just to be part of it is it's pretty amazing. Um, this 50 or this 100 uh, uh, chefs are out out here. Uh, in fact, I don't, I don't see them uh, uh, vertically. I see them horizontally. That they are all. In, in this uh, culinary industry, as in pioneers, uh, really guiding uh, a lot of uh, uh, industries in, in different uh, continents where the cuisine is going at the moment. It's a chance to come and, and to see my friends from around the world and, and, and to, to have a night to celebrate an industry that we all work very hard, you know, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a moment to take a break and to appreciate each other and the, and the hard work. Once the chefs had arrived, it was time to begin the countdown and find out who would top this year's list. Saison, Nam, the Test Kitchen, Attica, Azamendi and Eleven Madison Park all won special awards. While Helena Rizzo picked up the prize for Best Female Chef, Geordie Rocker was named Pastry Chef of the Year and Fergus Henderson received his Lifetime Achievement Award for standing ovation. For the first time ever, two British restaurants made it into the top ten and Osteria Francescana held on to third place. But it was Danish restaurant Noma that stole the night, dramatically regaining the top spot from El Cella de Can Rocker after losing out last year. It was like a genuine surprise this time. We never, ever, ever expected this. I, I mean, it, it's just really joyful, you know? It's, wow, thank you. Thank you for all the voters. There's a lot of chefs that vote on this. We've also been so lucky. You know, I can close my eyes and I can see who do I know to work 85 hours a week for every day, every week. Who do I want to cook for? I'm cooking for the ones that I feel it's worth going to work for 85 hours a week. 
it's people that really love to be there. They want to be there and try the best that we have to offer. And that's very, very, that's a delight to work with. 